This is Tom Dick. I'm a math professor and a math advisor for Texas Instruments, and this is part of the TI and Focus AV Calculus series, where we'll look at polar plots and calculus on the TI-84. Normally on the Y equals menu, you'll see Y1, Y2, and so on. We're going to change that over to polar plots. To do that, you go to the mode settings, go down to the fifth line, where you can change from function to polar. Once you've entered polar, when you return to the Y equals menu, you'll now see plot slots for R1, R2, and so on. These will be expected to be expressions in terms of the angle theta. We're going to use as an illustration the two polar curves that were featured in BC2 free response questions from the 2017 AP exam. The first curve was described as R1 equals 1 plus sine of theta times the cosine of 2 theta. The second curve is R2 equals 2 times the cosine of theta. Now we're going to take a look at the polar plots of these two curves. First of all, let's set up our window a little bit. So we'll go to the window. Notice that we now have settings for the theta values, our minimum and maximum theta values. Now in the problem, the minimum and maximum values were 0 and pi over 2. We've already got 0 in for theta min. We're going to change theta max to pi over 2. We can enter it with using the pi symbol and it'll convert it to a decimal approximation. Our theta step is going to be the increment that will be used for theta. It's useful to use, especially for trig functions, some uh, denominator for pi that's divisible by both 4 and 6. We're going to go ahead and use 60 here. So we'll do pi over 60 for our theta step. Enter that, and there you see the decimal approximation for that. Now for the window dimensions itself, let's go ahead and use the zoom menu. And we'll use, start out at least with a zoom decimal window. There we've got a nice graph of the two curves, but it's kind of small. So we're going to make a little bit of an adjustment here. I'm going to cursor over, and let's kind of recenter the screen um, let's say how about at the top of that red semicircle. So it looks like that's approximately at 1 comma 1. So we're going to arrow over our cursor to 1 comma 1. And then we'll go back to the zoom menu and use zoom in to zoom in with that as the new center point for our screen. Ah, now we've got a much better window. And this is a very nice look at the two curves and it looks very much like the illustration that was provided on the AP exam. When I turn on the trace feature, we notice the trace now gives us theta values as well as the x and y coordinates as we trace along the curve. Right now I'm on the first curve, R1, which is the blue curve. I can use the up-down arrows to switch over to the other curve. So now we're on the second function, or second polar curve, and we're tracing along. Uh, notice that the right arrow is incrementing theta, even though the cursor is moving from right to left. Since we're actually plotting in polar coordinates, we might like our trace to report those coordinates. So we go over to Format, and that's a, where we can change from rectangular graphing coordinates to polar graphing coordinates, as I'm showing here. Once we've entered polar graphing coordinates, we can return to trace and notice now that it's giving us the r and theta values along the curve. Again, as we use the left and right arrows, we can move along the curve. Uh, the up and down arrows will switch back and forth between the two curves. One of the questions that was asked in BC2 was to find the area of this region enclosed by the first polar curve and the x-axis. Now to do that on the TI-84, we'll return to the calculator screen and set up the integral that would give us that area. What we'll need to do is take a factor of 1 half times the integral of the square of the polar r value. So we'll use fn int, integrate from 0 to pi over 2, that was the bounds on our theta values for that part of the curve. And again, we can just use the pi symbol as we're entering the limits of integration. So now we've got our integral running from 0 to pi over 2. And our integrand, again, will be the square of the appropriate 
polar curve. In this case we'll go to the Y variables menu and go to polar to pick up R1. We'll square that function value and then finally we'll need to indicate the variable to integration which in this case is theta. We'll hit enter and we'll find the desired value of that area which is given as 0 0.648. Now I'd like to return to our polar graphs and ask a different question than those that were asked on BC2. Suppose I'm interested in the slope of the polar curve at a particular point. For example, let's suppose we wanted to go to the point corresponding to theta equals pi over 3. I enter that value for theta and it jumps immediately to that point and we can see our polar coordinates for that point on the blue curve, R1. We can calculate the slope by going to the calculate menu and selecting dy dx. When we do that and enter, we get a slope value and that would be the slope of the tangent line to that polar curve at that point. Now if I go back to the calculate menu, you'll notice there's also dr d theta. If we calculate dr d theta instead, we're going to find that dr d theta is approximately negative 1.75. That represents the instantaneous rate of change of r with respect to theta at that point. Now let's take a break from the 84 to review a little calculus that will be useful to us. If you have a formula for a polar curve expressed as r of theta, then you can express y and x as functions of theta by using the polar to rectangular coordinate conversion formulas. y of theta would be r of theta times sine theta and x of theta would be r of theta times cosine theta. And using as long as r of theta is differentiable you could use the chain and product rules to find dy dx in terms of theta as we've shown here. Now let's return back to our screen and I want to pose a little different question. Suppose I want to find and graph the tangent line to the curve at that point. We've got the slope, it's given by dy dx, it's approximately 0.9. Now it's going to be hard to graph both the polar curve and a line using either the function plotter or the polar plotter. But something that will handle both is the parametric plotter. So I've gone back to mode and I'm going to switch over to parametric. Once we have that, here are a couple of formulas I've already entered. Notice that the x1 and y1 are simply the conversion formulas for polar to parametric x1t is r1 of t times cosine t, y1t is r1 of t times sine of t. In x2 and y2 I've set up a parametric form for a line. m is going to be the slope, a and b are the x and y coordinates of the point of tangency. Now let's see if we can make use of this. I'm going to return to the calculator screen and what I'm going to do is calculate that a and b value. Now what that will be is I'll need my R1 evaluated at the theta value for that point which was pi over 3. So we're taking R1 of pi over 3. We're going to multiply by the cosine of pi over 3 and that should give us the x coordinate of the point of tangency that we're after. So after I've entered our cosine of pi over 3 and we hit enter, we find the x coordinate and we're going to store that in the value a. And let's see we've, what we've got is approximately 0 0.283. Now we want to do a similar thing for the y coordinate at that point of tangency. To save some typing, I'm just going to echo using the entry and we'll edit that. We're, we'll change the cosine of pi over 3 here to the sine of pi over 3. That's going to give us the y coordinate. And instead of storing that in A, we'll store that in B. That's the y coordinate of our point of tangency. We're ready to go. And there's our y coordinate is approximately 0 0.491. And remember that our slope at that point, dy dx, was approximately 0 0.9. We'll store that in M. And then with all those values filled in, we can graph using the parametric plotter and take a look at the curve. Now first of all we may need to change our parametric plot settings. We've changed the independent variable over to t 
here the t min and t max were just at their default values of 0 and 2 pi. I want the t values to be such that we'll, we'll get the whole line. So I'm just going to pick negative 2 pi for convenience. That should give us a long enough stretch of an interval. Uh, it will include a lot more of the polar curve than we had before, uh, but it will have the piece that we need from 0 to pi over 2. I'm going to make my t step match up with the theta step that we used before. And now I'm graphing the polar curve again, this time parametrically, and also graphing the tangent line. How good a job did we do? Well, let's turn on the trace. Now we've got the parametric tracer. Let's go over to the point of tangency. We'll just center pi over 3. There we are at that point, and we can see that that red line is doing a really nice job of just kissing the curve at that point of tangency. So that's how you can use parametric plotter to do a mix of both polar and regular plots, function plots like this line. Well that winds up this illustration of using the 84 to explore some calculus with polar curves. For resources like this video and others, please visit education.ti.com.